What up guys, so right now I'm gonna show you guys how to do a ball face step by step. So you wanna make sure you get some gloves on, put some gloves on. These really um, help with the hair splinters, you know, you don't wanna work um, with hair splinters, it's really annoying, it's kind of painful. So my next step I really like to do is um, split the hair, you know, make sure you clean clean the area that you're gonna work on, make sure it's, uh, it's you know, just neat and clean. So you wanna split the hair, apply the hair clips, brush the hair down if you have to just like I did grab a comb or a brush make sure you get everything everything nothing's in the way of your area your work area so what I like to do next is um clean my canvas you know I want I'm gonna get my metal clips my one and a half by Oster and my BGRs and I'm basically create my canvas where my face is gonna end start I like to do this because it's uh like I said I like to work keep my work area clean you know so I'm, this is a this is even way before you even start the fade this is a very important step so I'm not gonna go in any higher than where the lineup would be all the way around the head and then um, the way I, I like to um, use my machine is I don't I don't put pressure I don't force it to cut the hair I just let it do its own thing I just let the weight um, basically rest on the scalp. And then I like to get a brush, a fairly large brush during this uh, step because it just swipes the hair down and just cleans it up real, real quick, grabs everything. So again, you want to make sure you keep that line as straight as possible, the top one. This is it's not really that important, but it's just to be clean and neat, you know, you want to get used to just uh, making straight lines all the way around the head. Again, I like to go over my area a few times just to make sure everything's neat and even. And as you get to the top line, you know, your first line on the top, you want to make sure you kind of pull out. Don't really apply too much weight as you uh, fading up. You want to make sure you go against the grain when you're working with straight hair. And the way I check, you know, uh, I, I level out my teeth, the way the hair the hair um, grows. I just level out my teeth, you know, I make my teeth uh, parallel to the hair growth. And you, that's really when the machine really grabs all the hair and just cuts everything neat. Nice and even, you know. Again, you want to be gentle, gentle, not, not a lot of pores. This also helps with keeping your machine cool when you, you don't force it too much. You just right now, my next step is gonna be my line up my first guideline. So I'm gonna go around the head, kind of drop it towards the back, and he we're gonna keep the sideburns when we do the lineup. So I take my uh, detailers, wall detailers, I put them upside down, and I scratch the line. The reason why I do this is because my brother he has really thick hair, so we we gotta make the the bottom part of the fade really clean really uh, take it down to skin so we can make the fade pop out so my ne my next step is going to be just clean up the hair in the bottom start the ball fade you know so i like to start from zero skin so make sure again you know you're not forcing your machine you're not you're not applying too much pressure on the client you know you don't want to irritate the skin you want to make it uncomfortable for them so again just let the machine its own way do its own thing you just you're just guiding it. That's all you have to do. You don't want to rush anything. You want to take your time with this. You know, that makes the difference, you know. The details in the haircut, everything makes a difference. Again, I'm still using my brush because it's just clean. I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I'm st this step, we're still setting up the fade, how it's going to start. We're, we're never, we haven't even started the fading part. So this step, we're still setting everything up. This is a pre-fade, you know what I mean? So you wanna make sure, you're, again, your work area is clean and neat as possible. Everything matters. Again, we're doing the other side, same thing to the other side, scratching, scratching the hair. I like to say scratching because that's that's what it, feel like, what it feels like, that I'm scratching the hair. Be light, smooth touch. Don't force the machine, again, let it do its own thing. I like to go over my area a few times. Make sure you pull that ear back, you know, so you don't, the um, clippers on, don't even bite it, don't bite the air, you don't want uh, to scratch.
especially here. And, and it gives you better visibility of your area too, right, right behind the ear. And depending, depending on the person you're cutting, you know they might have thicker hair or um, less, less um, thick hair. <laughs> but you wanna make sure, you know, every, you just wanna make sure everything's clean, you know? With, with my little brother, he has really thick hair, so I gotta make sure I go over a few times. So my next step is I'm gonna grab my Andy shavers. And um, again, with same, same thing with all my machines, I never rush them, I never push, uh, too, I never put too much um, pressure on the machines, the skin, you wanna let it do its own thing. That's how these things are designed, you know? So you wanna make sure everything's clean. This, this really takes it down to skin, smooth, smooth, even closer to the razor. So I like to, I, I like to really pull these out and just take it to skin. This really makes the fade clean, it makes it really pop out. As you get closer to that first guideline that we made, you don't want to touch that guideline, you kind of want to pull out. You want to think of it as like, you're making like a like a half moon towards the skin, so, so you're kind of pulling out as you get higher, so you don't make a hard, hard line. That, that line would be easier to erase, you know? You, wanna make, you don't want to create a line, you just want to make a shadow, type of, type of a shadow. You want to feel, Feel the skin. It, it's good to take off the glove, or, or some some barbers cut the gloves so, so they can really feel the skin. Again, you want to go over your area. Don't apply too much pressure. Just let the machine do its own work. Right here, you notice I pulled up a, a smaller brush. That's because it's just small hair. It's just this brush really just cleans it up one swipe. That's it. One, one or two swipes. And as you can see, as I'm getting higher, I'm not I'm not touching the line I'm pulling out. Make sure the skin skin is smooth. Gotta grab all the hair as possible. Go against the grain. On my little brother again, I had to go over everything a few times because he, he just really has thick hair. Next, I'm gonna take my magic clips, my senior magic clips. I'm gonna uh, close the blades. And then I'm gonna keep the shape of the line up of the guideline that I made. I'm gonna keep the form. So we're gonna go up about a finger length. All my steps, my finger length is, is how I uh, what I go up to. I don't really go push it higher than the finger length. So you want, again, you, I, I like to make sure my area that I'm working with is even, even and neat as possible. So my guideline uh, goes with the first matches the first guideline that I made and the hair under under that second guideline that I'm making is, is, is as even as possible again you know right here as I'm, I'm making my uh, second guideline I'm pulling out I'm not going all the way straight through you know so it's like I'm thinking of while I'm doing this I think that I, you know I'm not trying to make a straight line I'm trying to make it like a shadow I'm not trying to make a straight line you're kind of pulling out as you go to the second line and I'm making sure everything under that is even the hair under that is even so again you know keeping that finger length and keeping the form of your guideline and then I like to come out of as you can see like in the arc I like to come all the way out with my face and then another thing I like to I like to make my guidelines all the way around the head Some barbers really um, sometimes finish one half of the head and do the other, but I, I just like to really do everything from step one, you know, all around. Again, make sure everything under the, the guidelines, even the hair, this really matters. Again, you know, everything, you know, the, the better you get at doing the, the basic steps, even even with the, with the, the, your um, your swipes, you know, your, 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 the way you're taking in your, your uh, cutting, you're making the guidelines it matters it makes a big difference the more strict you're more the more ocd you're about it the better the haircuts the quality of your hair is going to be so i take my time i take my time with my hair because i don't rush i like to make sure everything everything is even neat and not only i'm not the only one that appreciates that you know what i mean the client appreciates the time you take when, when you when they know that you're taking your time to to go over one spot make sure everything's straight make sure everything's blended good 
Now we're gonna go back to our detailers and erase that first line. You know, so so the second like eyeliner that we made right there was our clippers close. Now we take our trimmers, our, our liners, and erase that first line that we made. So if 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 you made sure that your when your clippers were closed and that that hair under that second guideline was even, this step should be easy. So it just be a swipe, you know. That that's why I make sure all my steps are good because I don't have to go back and forth between my clippers. I'm saving time. This is be, being efficient. So you make sure that hair underneath is even. So now, it's, as you can see, you know it's easy to erase that first first guideline. So it's, it's now like a shadow. You know you can barely see that first guideline. So right here, you know, I'm showing the, the technique, you know, what you want to pull out as you get higher to that second guideline, you know? When when I'm like in the middle of that first guideline and the second guideline, when I'm kind of going up, that's when I start pulling out, if that makes sense. So, you know, the finger length that I was talking about, think of the midway point between that, that's when you start pulling out. That's when you start making that that shadow on the top here. The second guideline should be a shadow, that's what I like to think of, like I said, my guideline. Right here, I'm flipping my trimmers, you know, really, really make sure I grab the olive, the hair right there, and raise that first guideline I made. You know, again, you can barely see I'm putting in barely any pressure on the skin. It, you don't see the hair, the head, you know, moving back and forth, like you're not really pushing the client's head. You're not irritating the skin, you're just being smooth. You know, again, I, I, was, I like to show, you know, I'm scratching the hair, I'm not cutting it, I'm just scratching it with the machine. As you can see, you know, I'm taking my time to make sure everything is even, everything is raised. Pull down the ear, gives you a cleaner, cleaner vision of what you're, what you're working with. Visibility. times as you need to you don't rush the haircut next I'm gonna take my one detachable blade this is the same thing as a half guard of wall the metal the uh, plastic guard so again I'm gonna go up about a finger length you know this this blade is about the same same length as your uh, clippers open without a guard so it's like a half like I said you know but I like using this these uh, metal clips again because you know it saves you time because the hair is smooth, especially with clients that have really thick hair like my little brother right here. I gotta go even with this blade. I gotta go over the spot like a few times. But these blades really save you a lot of time and the quality, the quality of the of the cut is better. I feel I feel like the plastic guards give me a cheap a cheap cut. You know, I gotta go over it. I feel like it's not cutting. These really just cut one swipe. It's done. So again, I'm going up about a finger length, keeping keeping the same form of my, like, my guidelines, keeping the same shape. Again, you know, make sure, making sure my technique is still there when I'm halfway through that through that guideline, through that space. You know, I'm pulling out between my guidelines. The mid the mid midway midway point is when I start pulling out. So I'm making the shade on the top. I'm not making a line. Again, you want you want to remember that you're not making a guideline. You're making a shade. This really, the reason why I like I, this this technique, you know, I like to say is you're making a shade is because you're saving, you're kind of cutting, uh, saving steps. You know, you're taking shortcuts. If if you were to make a, a or like a rough line on the top, you know, a hard line, it'll be a little harder to erase. You you will be taking more steps to erase that line. Now we're gonna um, go our take our clippers and close them all halfway, close or open them halfway. And we're, we're gonna erase that second guideline we made. Again, right here, you might you might wanna have you might have to open your clipper a little bit. You might wanna uh, close it a little bit, depending on how you feel, how you see it. This this is uh this is gonna be something you you gotta judge. But mostly for me, it's between halfway and close. And th this really helps me erase that second guideline I made. And then again, I'm using that technique where I'm not I'm just scratching the hair. I'm not putting too much pressure on the clippers i'm not i'm not rushing the clips i'm, I'm letting the clippers do its own work and when i'm getting to the halfway point of my uh of my heart of my guidelines i'm pulling out 
So then again, you want to think of you're scratching the hair and then you're pulling out. Another technique that helps is you know you you as as you get to the high uh, as you're reaching up you know as you're going higher between the guidelines you know with your technique you want from the bottom you want to start with your with your um, blades laid down all the way to the scalp and as you get higher you want to just uh, rotate rotate the the surface of where you're touching the skin you know ro uh, bring it to the bottom of the blade so again that helps with the circular motion of as you pull out, you know, you're kind of using it as a lever, if that makes sense. So as you can see, right now I have my blades really flat on the skin when I first start, and as I'm going higher, I'm, I'm levering, lever levering the clippers. And then again, you know, you want to make sure you brush the hair, like every couple uh, strokes that you do with your clippers, you want to struggle with the brush. Keep your work area clean. This really helps, you know, visibility, everything. You, you want to keep the hair brushed down as natural as possible. So again, you can see I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing the haircut. I'm not rushing. I'm taking my time, you know. This is art. You, you never want to rush it. It's how you feel, how you you want to express yourself with it. You don't, you don't want to rush it. So now as you can see, we, we're going to the other side again. I kept the same, same form. Same form that I started my guidelines. I'm keeping the same form with my fade, the guidelines, everything. So again, I have my clippers halfway right here. Stroking up. Make sure I brush, make sure you brush and stroke a few strokes and then you bring out your brush and brush the hair out. Right here, I can tell I have my clippers halfway open. As I'm getting a little higher to the second guideline, you know, and in the bottom, I really close them all the way, and I'm, I'm just scratching the hair. I'm barely even touching the skin. I'm just really scratching the hair, you know. Make sure you go over your area a lot, a few times. As much as you need. You really gotta be patient with your steps because. Um, this this really this really helps with the quality of your haircut patience you know you want to take your time again you can see I'm just letting the clippers loose do their own thing I'm just letting I'm just guiding them that's all you have to do Again, I'm putting my, ba my blade all the way flat to the skin, and as I'm getting, as I'm going up, you know, I'm, I'm leveraging with the skin, with the, with the scalp, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using that circular motion up, you know, I'm, I'm pulling out as I'm going higher. Again, that, that mid, midway point, point between your guidelines, that's when you start pulling out. Right here, I have my clippers all the way close because I'm working on that first, I mean, that second guideline we made. You also want to get good with your eye, you know, I look at looking at the, um, the details. This, this is really detailing. This, this, these few step, uh, this few first steps, you know, really help with the, with the clean, clean look of the fade that, that, that look that just gives it a fade, uh, like a, like a shine, like, like a clean, clean cut, you know, it just stands out. Because you made sure everything was clean from the bottom, everything was from the scalp. To, to a smooth transition, you know, and you step. One trick that I like to do, you know, I really kind of push my, my, my first steps up, you know, I, my, I, my first few steps, I'm bold on them because that makes your face stand out. You know, the, the, the cleaner, the closer to the scalp your first few steps are, it's gonna make this face stand out when you start blending to, towards the, the longer hair on the top, as, you, as we're gonna see right now in a bit. So right now, again, I came out with my uh, one and a half guard. 
and I went over my, my first first line I made when I started uh, making my canvas. I'm just make sure, making sure that that line is straight now. It's not only straight, but it, it also kind of matches my first guy line that I made. You can see, you know, you gotta make sure it's even all the way around the head. Again, this gives you space to kind of work with with the second with the third guideline we made right under that. You don't want to have your guidelines jammed up. You don't want to have them that close together because then, it, you know, if you're looking at your at the fade from a far distance, it's just gonna look like a like a bold cut. You're not gonna see fade. You're just gonna see skin and then just hair, and that kind of just throws your haircut off. It just it doesn't look clean. So you, so you really want to spread out your, your steps. I say like I, I use a finger length. pressure on the, on the scalp, just letting the clippers do their work. When I'm getting to, between the midway, midway points of my guideline, I'm pulling out, I start pulling out. Again, I always like to think I'm, I'm making a shadow when I'm making that second guide. Like when, I'm, when I'm creating guidelines, I'm making shadows, I'm not making lines. Again, I like to make sure everything's clean, client is comfortable. Not scratching the back, not reaching over. Scratching the back. Saves you time when you're clean. Makes everything look uh, professional. Now we're gonna take our 1A. This clip is the same size as the number one guard of wall, the plastic guard. But again, I like to use these because it just saves you time. And I haven't even talked about it. You know, these these clippers they don't have any, they don't have a lever, so. This is all technique. This is all the technique I'm, 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 I've been explaining this whole time. When I'm, when I'm getting to the halfway point between the guidelines, I'm pulling out. I'm, I'm using that circular motion, that half moon motion. I'm using my clippers as a lever in the scalp. Does that make sense? This is all technique. That, that's why I like using these clippers because it, gives, it saves you time. This is a big time saver. I don't have to go back and forth between opening and closing my blades. I just make sure I, when I use, that's why I'm, I'm big on, on details. You know, I, I make sure my steps are right because when I go to my next blade, I don't have to go back and forth. I can just use this blade, you know. So again, this blade is, this next um, blade, the one ace, it's not gonna fully erase that bottom line. That bottom guideline is not gonna fully erase it, it's gonna turn it into a shadow. And that's what we want. So don't worry if you're seeing your line not erasing, that's okay. That's this is just what we want. We just wanna turn it into a shadow. Again, you know, no pressure on the scalp. Let your machine do its own work. Let, let, let the weight of the machine guide you. You know, the, the clippers, they're, they're an extension of your hand. That you just tell it what to do and it just does it. So again, I, I like to start my blade all the way down, pressed on the scalp. And as I'm getting to the mid, midway point between my guidelines, I pull out, I start using the circular, circular motion. Again, take your time, take your time. You're not rushing anything. You know, just imagine, imagine you went to a restaurant. Would you like your food rushed or would you like the chef to take their time and, and put in their their, uh, their um, detailed work in your food? It makes a difference, right? That's why there's a difference between McDonald's and a five-star restaurant, just because everyone focuses on the detail. So this is what we're doing. We're focusing on the details. We're taking our time with this. This, if you're barely starting out, you know, take your time with your haircut. It might take you two hours, but at least you did a clean haircut. You know, that, that really goes a long way, you know? What's the difference between an hour and two hours if the haircut's gonna last a week or two? So an hour, an hour to two hours, it's nothing compared to two weeks that the haircut's gonna last. So take your time with it. Your client will appreciate it. 
so again this i'm explaining how i'm using the scalp as a, le as a lever you know the blade as a lever so i start with my blade you know press down with the scalp and then as i'm going to my mid as i'm reaching my whip midway point between my guidelines i'm pulling out so right here we switched to our one one metal clip we went down a size and again we're, we're gonna this this is really gonna help us erase that shadow guideline that we were um, creating with our 1A blade. So again, right here, I'm using the leverage system. I'm not gonna call it that the leverage system. I'm not. I'm not starting with my blade pressed down all the way down the scalp. The the midway point is is what's pressing the scalp. So the actual cutting part of the blade is is a little bit. It's like floating on the scalp. You get me? It's just scratching the hair. Again, the only thing that's touching the, the actual scalp is the middle, the middle, middle of the blade, like the bottom part of the half, the bottom half of the blade. The actual teeth that are moving are floating on the scalp, so they're just scratching the hair. Yo, this, this is like the sauce, you know. This is what I'm telling you guys. You know, pay attention to this. Again, you know, the middle, the middle of the blade, the bottom half of the blade is really what's touching the scalp. You want to keep your teeth floating. You want to keep your teeth just scratching the hair. As you can see, you know, it makes a smooth transition. It, make, it makes everything look nice, even and clean. These blades, bro, these, these blades really do the trick. So now, you know, I'm just, I'm, this is the detailing of the blade. This, this is um, really, when, again, what makes your face stand out. So again, I'm going all the way back down to our so our third step and I'm opening my my magic clips all the way up and I'm just focusing on the detail erasing the shadows and right here I'm again I'm not using the whole blade I'm not putting my whole blade on the scalp I'm using the corner of my blade or the bottom or I'm just touching the scalp with the bottom half of the blade scratching the hair so now this is the only time I, I like to use a plastic guard my one and a half plastic guard this is when I'm just connecting the fade with the with the upper the upper uh, half of the fade you know the, the the long hair this is really really where you, you connect your fade with the with, with, with the hair that you started out with or, or with your base so right here I'm not I'm not even pushing pushing the blade in I don't, I don't start with my blade all the way down with the scalp teeth you know I use the bottom half of my blade and just go straight up I'm not doing it like this that's not how you start you just use the second half of the second bottom half of your blade and just move straight up this this how you really connect the fade and this you want, you want to make sure you're going against the grain so right here his hair is going going kind of sideways so that's how I'm, that's how my strokes my strokes are ma matching the way the hair grows. Again, I, I use I use the scalp to sh to kind of show show like the angle that I'm I'm cutting. The scalp will tell you your fade will tell you the angle you have to place your blade to to connect to make that transition smooth. This is something you gotta feel. You know you can't you can't really explain it. You just gotta know. How the scalp is just make, guiding you to to make that that next transition even. And again, you know, I'm still using that the method that's that where I'm pulling out you know, the half moon. This, this this is a good reason too why I like using this guard because it's a plastic guard so it's not it doesn't cut a lot you know you have to go over the area a few times so this is where you have room for air this is where you have room for cleaning you know you could take your time with this you could go little by little and you won't mess up so this is a 
you can see, you know the hair's not sticking out. We're making that that transition smooth and even towards the top of the day. You know you want you want to keep keep those hair hairs even the side. So if you're looking, imagine you're looking at the haircut from the front. You don't want any hair sticking out from the sides. And that's what I mean when you gotta match where, you're, where the the angle of the scalp to to where the the fade is. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to have those hair sticking out. Again, barely any pressure on the scalp. Let the own weight of the clippers guide you. So now we're gonna use our, cl our clip over comb technique. Um, this is a pretty advanced technique. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna go in with your comb. You wanna keep the bottom half, the bottom part of the comb, the backbone, that's what it's called, the backbone. You wanna keep that rested on the scalp. And depending on where you're, you are between your uh, your fade, you know, if you're, you're at the bottom part of the fade, you wanna you wanna use the, the smaller part of your, of your comb, you know, the smaller teeth. You want to use that part to work on the, the lower half of the blade, you know, the small hairs. Because that, those those fine teeth really help grab those small hairs. And depending on if you're going higher with the comb, if you're going higher with the, if you're going, if you're working your, your way high, upwards, you know, you, you want to, you want to start pulling the hair, the comb out, you know, kind of using, again, the scalp as a lever, keep the backbone on the, on the scalp, and then, Pull out with the teeth on the top. This, this, um, the comb, you know, this uh, clip over comb technique really helps connect your fade, connect your steps. At the end, this is really a detail, you know, this is this is adding the sauce, this is making sure, making sure your ingredients are right. You know, you're making sure your transition is right, as smooth as possible. This is clean up, this is clean up, this is detail. Again, this, I'm using the widest teeth of my comb because I'm, I'm on the upper half of my fade. Grabbing those long hairs. You want to make sure. Now you see, I switched to my other side of the comb, the smallest teeth. I'm really I'm grabbing this, the small hairs on the bottom. And up here, I'm just grabbing the hairs on the top. And again, this is what I mean. You want to keep the same level of the scalp. You know, you want to watch the scalp. When you're looking at the front of the, of the haircut, you know, you don't want any hair sticking out. So this really helps when you turn your comb upside down, you know, uh, horizontally. This really helps connect the fade and really eliminate, eliminate those hairs that stick out. So now we're gonna move on to our lineup. So again, I'm making sure everything, my work area is clean. No long hairs are flipping down towards the front, you know, getting in the way. You wanna take a brush and clean, clean the part, make sure everything is laid down as natural as possible, the hair is brushed down. And then again, right now we're gonna we're gonna set the our work area. You know we're gonna clean our canvas. We're, we're not gonna start the lineup. We're not we're not taking our trimmers and starting the lineup. Right now we're cleaning up. We're we're setting our base. We're we're cleaning up. We're making our work area. So right here his his uh uh hair the, his uh lineup hairs are really too long. So we're gonna trim them down. This really helps the lineup stand out and and really helps the lineup. Uh, maintain for a few days longer you know what I mean so we're taking our one and a half uh, plastic guard open and just going over that that area so again I'm brushing the hair down making sure your hair is laid down as natural as possible take a brush brush the hair down and now I'm taking my wall detailers and I make I, li I like to you make sure you know if, if I, I, I level the client's head, you know, kind of eye level towards me or make sure they're looking straight, parallel to the ground. And I, I take my trimmers and I guide my blade hor uh, horizontally to, to the wall on the top. You know, you find the wall on the top and you find that corner and you, and you just make sure you cut your trimmers mesh, mesh the, the line, you know, they're, they're parallel to the ceiling. So this really helps with the with the lineup being straight. This is a, a trick I like to, to do. 
and, and once once I'm, I place, I start my lineup from the from the middle of the, of the head, you know, right on top of the nose. So as soon as I make, so as soon as I, I make that first tap, you know, I make sure that line is, is as straight as possible. And then again, you know, your, your clipper, the, your blade is, is already straight. So I just use the the straight. I use I use my blade as a tool as well to, to make sure that straight that my, my line is straight as possible. And then while moving to the side, you know, I'm making sure I'm making sure my line is still parallel to the ceiling, you know. So this is really how you make a straight line up. And then again, you you don't want to push your line up. up. One thing I like to do, I the the, the step that I did before, you know, cleaning up my work area, this really helps because when you clean up the, that work area, it really shows you where the natural line is. So you just wanna, you just wanna go over that natural line. You don't wanna push any higher than that. So then again, as you can see, you know, I'm just using my straight edge blade. You know, my blade is straight, so I'm just trusting that, and I'm, I'm going over to the side. Making sure that line is, is straight with the blade. So now we're working on our side lineup. So the bottom corner, the bottom corner of the of, the, of that lineup, you know, I like to make sure it's it's it's, uh, it's line uh, is pointing towards the corner of the eye. Both those points, you know what I mean. And then with the arc, you want to make sure that that point that's reaching to, towards the line, you know, to the sideline, is is parallel to to the lineup. So you, so that as you can see, you know, my blade right there is parallel to my guideline. And then you also want to make sure that both sides, both points are matching. You don't want to have one one arc higher than the other. It's gonna throw the whole haircut off. It's gonna make your head like it's looking like tilting sideways when it's not. So again, that first start with with parallel with your um, blade of uh, trimmers parallel to the to the uh, lineup. Now. I make sure I grab some hairspray or some glue, or even with the with the product you're using. You know, I like using topics. So you, topics usually come with with the holding spray. But I like to use this new spray I, I just got. It's called Glue. It really helps with, with the hold. So you, again, with the fibers, you don't want to apply too much. I barely put any any product. I barely apply any product. Just want to put a few taps. And that's it. You're not, you're not creating, you're not trying to make the lineup super dark, it's, it's gonna look so fake, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna grab too much attention, you don't, you don't want that, you just want a little bit of attention. Again, just tapping, tapping the, the pump, you don't want to put too much, you just want to make sure the lineup stands out just a bit, not, not a lot, you know, you're not saying like, hey, yo, you know, you're just walking in and people are just looking. So again, after I, after I apply my, my hair fibers, I like to go take my trimmers and go over the lineup again. This really helps to stand out and makes it sharp before we even take out the straight razor. razor. You want to make sure your lineup is as sharp as possible without the razor before we even get to the razor. You know, some clients don't even like the razor, so you want to make sure that lineup is as sharp as possible. And that, that's, what, that's why the hair fibers help as well. You know they help. They help for as a style, and they're, they're also used as, as a tool to make sure your line, your lineup is as straight as possible. And towards the bottom of the lineup, you know, as we're getting to the arc of the lineup, the bottom part of the lineup, you know, I don't. I don't really use too much hair fibers. If anything, I just brush it off. It just I kind of blend the hair fibers with the hair as well. So now we're gonna take our elegance gel. We're gonna apply, you know, barely, barely anything. Just 
glide your head, your finger through through the forehead once left left to right. And that's it. We want to take our straight raise, raise it, stretch the skin. You know, barely any weight on the razor either. You just let the razor do its own thing. You know, let its own weight guide you. And then you also want to tap the line up. You don't want to push the line up back. You want to tap the line up with the razor. That really really helps with the sharp sharpness of the razor. It really helps with keeping it keeping it sharp. And also it helps with with keeping um, keeping it sharp for a longer period of time. You know, an extra day or two. So again, right now you wanna you wanna get good at using like the corner of your razor, the half part half part of your razor. And then right here, this is a more advanced technique. You, you want to flip your razor upside down and go up. You know, again, tapping the lineup. This again helps with the, keeping the lineup sharp for a longer period of time. So now as you can see, we're done with the haircut. And uh, we're not gonna style the hair because my little brother, he just likes to miss his look. So we're through guys. Hope this tutorial was helpful.